I'd like to invite any more kids who are with us this morning to come on up and join us. Oh, you guys are pretty special today. I guess everybody else is at the race, huh? So I was wondering if you guys could help me with something. Do you know what the word burden means? Does that word sound familiar? A burden is something you have to carry around that's heavy. So that's a pretty easy thing, right? Something you have to carry around that's heavy. So sometimes we have to carry things like, do you ever carry a backpack? And maybe you put too much stuff in it and it's really heavy. Yeah. Well, sometimes the things that we carry around that are heavy are things that are in our heart that are heavy, right? Not just things we have to carry around. So I have some things that are heavy. Can you hold that? That's heavy. Do you know what that word is, Sam? Lonely. Sometimes when we're lonely, that can feel really heavy in our heart, right? And what about you, Morgan? Can you carry that? Is that heavy? And it says sad. When we feel sad, that can feel really heavy in our heart. Or maybe we feel nervous. Can you take that one too, Sam? <laughs> Do you ever feel nervous about something? Maybe you're going to, well, I don't know about you, Sam, but I feel nervous when I'm going to meet new people. That makes me feel nervous. And how about this one? Do you know what that word says, Morgan? That one says afraid. Do you ever feel afraid of something? There's some things that are scary. Can you lift those up? Are those heavy? Can you lift it still? It's pretty heavy, right? No, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> now, what if, I, what if I gave you a couple more? <laughs> you think you could still lift it? Oh, barely. <laughs> so you know what we have to do when we have burdens, when we have things that are in our heart that are heavy? You know what's amazing is Jesus says we don't have to carry those things because we can't. It's too heavy, right? So what we can do is we can ask Jesus to carry our burdens for us. So we're going to pretend that this basket is our prayers to Jesus. So can you just throw all those burdens in that basket? Can you get them in there? We're going to give that to Jesus and give that to Jesus and give those to Jesus and give our fear to Jesus and give our sadness to Jesus and let Jesus carry it because we can't carry all of that ourselves, can we? This is really heavy. I tried to carry it earlier. So can we pray and thank Jesus for carrying our burdens for us? Okay, can you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, thank you for carrying our burdens and for loving us so much that you don't want us to have to carry things alone. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks, guys. You can go on back to Kids Church with Miss Audrey, and I will see you later. Lord, we are here, and we are struggling. We're in the midst of another school shooting. We're in the midst of another act of violence. We're in the midst of a world where wars are still going on. Lord, we need you. We are on bent knees. We are a community of faith that is calling out to you saying, Lord, we are struggling. God, our hearts pour out to you and for all those at Noblesville West Middle School. We pray for the teachers. We pray for the students. We pray for those, those two victims that have been shot, Lord, and for the courageous act of, that is the stories that are coming out about the teacher that tackled that active shooter that was not thinking about himself, but it was that selfless love that you tell us about, Lord, and we want to be like that. Lord, we want to give ourselves to you fully, but we know that sometimes, oftentimes we get it wrong, Lord. Help turn our hearts this day, Lord, to, to your peace, to your love, to your care, so that we can be that agents of hope that you've called us to be. And Lord, we also pray on this Memorial Day weekend, we pray for those dear lives lost in battle and strife. Lord, we are struggling with the presence of evil and violence in our world. And we need you, Lord. Oh, how we need you. Every hour we need you. You are our defense in our righteousness, O oh Lord, we need you. And God, we long for your peace to flood this world, and we cry out for your presence. We wonder if you hear our cries, how small is our faith? 
because we know, O oh Lord, from the very beginning of time, you have poured your love into this world. You are the Lord over all and worthy of our praise. And God, we know that even in our community, there is hurting. So God, I ask, as we are continuing to celebrate the great Pentecost, the moving of your spirit in our life, I ask a special anointing upon all those gathered here, Lord, the, those that are struggling physically, mentally, uh, socially, Lord, all the burdens that are then, Lord, let it be cast upon you, Lord. Not, not let us be putting it on, but Lord, you call us to put it upon you. So Lord, take our burden. Give us a blessing, a special anointing this day, and let us be poured out to you. But God, hear us now as we especially pray for the Wolfarts as they continue to grieve the death of their son, Stuart. For my wife, Lindsay, O oh Lord, who just is still mourning over the death of her grandfather. For Barb Bretz, for Ron Williams, for Emery and Blanche, for Nelson and LaDonna Chamberlain, for Sue Maple and her family, for my beloved friend John Knight that is continuing to search for a job, O oh Lord. For Mary Griffin that's about to go into surgery. Uh, for Tom Schubert that fell this week. And for all in our community who need your strength, who need your healing and your encouragement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, you, you call us, Lord. You call us to be your witness of peace to the world. You have given us new life in Jesus Christ who taught us about your love. Through Christ, we are adopted as your heirs, your beloved children. You've given us opportunities to bring hope and peace to others. Let us seize these opportunities for ministries of hope, encourage our hearts, strengthen our spirits and our commitments to serve you. And here now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It's often amazing to me how when a sermon theme is set months in advance that it's the exact right message and the right scripture for a day. Today's scripture fits that description. It's from uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. It's where Matthew uh, shares the actual words of Jesus. It's at the end of the 11th chapter. Here's what our Lord says to us. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then Jesus says the word that Indiana needs today. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for the Lord says, I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find, doesn't say maybe or you could, he says you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. O oh Lord, may my words be your words, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Amen. Well, as uh, Pastor William's prayer already indicated, the specter of violence 
came amazingly close to home Friday morning, as we all are now aware. Friday is my day off, and Deb and I were just kind of hanging around, relaxing. She was doing her prayer time in the living room, and I was doing my prayer time down in the basement. And, and then our son called, uh, son Matt, who just uh, graduated from law school. He was going downtown. To, I'm a little bouncy there, guys. Give me a little less volume. Thank you. Our son was going downtown for a law school, uh, uh, for a, a class that he's taking in preparation to take the bar exam. And when he hadn't been gone but about 10 minutes, when he calls and says, Dad, what's going on? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm, I drove down Benford and there was about 10 cop cars racing fast north as quick as they could go. And then I got on 465 and there were a bunch of cop cars going north. And, then I got on uh, 70 and the same thing. What's going on? Has there been a school shooting or something? I said, I don't know. Uh, so I was standing there in the kitchen when I answered the phone and hit the remote to turn on the TV right there. And sure enough, all the local channels were reporting what we now know, that there had been a school shooting in Noblesville at a middle school, which raised... Uh, Deb and my I are a lot because you see our oldest son teaches at a middle school in Noblesville. But at first they didn't report which it was and then after a very few minutes as we all know now it, they reported it's Noblesville West Middle School where our son teaches and coaches. And you could feel and you're probably feeling it now as I am that anxiety just raising oh Lord please don't let it be him. And yet at the same time, I had this guilt, you know, knowing if it's not my son, it's somebody else's son. And then they reported about a 13-year-old girl who had been shot. And uh, we continued to be anxious. That's also the son who he and his wife have chosen to be estranged from us. So we didn't know if we would even hear anything. So I just quickly sent him a three-word text, are you okay? And within, fortunately, he did respond within a few minutes. We learned that, yes, he was indeed okay. Well, it's, uh, it's been an amazing week. And then Pastor William, because I was gone on Friday, did a great job. He wrote, I hope you all read his email that he sent out on Friday, encouraging us to pray for Noblesville and for the situation. And uh, it was a wonderful thing, and I so appreciate my young colleague and it's nice to be known as young. It won't last long, so enjoy it while you can. And so uh, we, we were praying that and thinking about that. And then uh, some people responded back and said, well, but prayer is not enough. And we all know that. Prayer is not enough to stop the violence. But what can we do? Well, Miranda, Dr. Miranda Cruz, who just gave this wonderful message, posted something on Facebook Friday, and I just asked her this morning, I said, would you just share what you, what you wrote on that Facebook post? It was so amazing. Miranda, would you share that? Uh, we all tend to run to our opinions. Our opinions get hot, our emotions get hot, and we wonder what we can do. And um, I just asked, If you keep a firearm in your home, just lock it up. It's it. That doesn't, that's not difficult. If you've made that choice, that's your right. That doesn't need to inflame our opinions or our emotions. It doesn't need to prevent us from talking civilly to each other. If you have a firearm in your home, just make sure you know where it is. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's still where you think it is. Make sure it's locked. Don't assume that no one can find it. Don't assume that the key is still hidden where you hid it. Don't assume that there aren't any children or young people uh, who wouldn't ever do what we experienced on Friday. Um, I think that's something really simple that we could all agree to do if we're in the position to do that. Thank you, and all of us together say. 
So secure your guns, that's what we're saying. Well, we know that uh, because this event has happened, we're aware again that it's a chaotic world in which we live. We, we know there's all kinds of things, and, and gun issues is not the only thing. We're, we, we feel uh, and see about world strife, and we're hoping that a, a peace summit may continue yet with North Korea. We know that there's a lack of civility in our nation now. There's a lack of civility with elected leaders and all those. We know that our, our country is in a mess. Perhaps uh, the most unsettling is that our kids don't feel safe, our grandchildren are fearful for going to school. We know that human sex trafficking is rampant and Denise uh, Robinson has been doing a great job of interpreting that on behalf of our Attorney General. We know that there's so many problems in the world. We know that the opioid epidemic is, is just that, an epidemic. So many young people, I read the obits faithfully and there were two in there this morning and I said to myself, I wonder if maybe those might be opioid addiction deaths. We know it's rampant. We know that bullying is occurring and we wonder, we'll, maybe we'll find out that young, how, how ludicrous that a 12 year young, young man would take those guns to school. We, we know that bullying is rampant. We know that racism continues to be a huge problem in our country. We know that climate change is, is going everywhere. I don't know how you can deny it when, when the, we're now again this month, at, we're on pace to set the highest uh, average temperature for May that we've ever had. We know that our educational system is in shambles. And we know that many of our families are struggling. Not too many days ago, Deb and I went out to dinner and we were sitting there waiting for our food to come and there was a family there at a, an adjoining table, mom, dad, and the two kids. And what I saw was uh, all four of them were looking at their phones. There was no conversation going on between the family. How was your day or what? Was on? But they were all looking at their phones. Did you see the one in Let It Out this week? It said, why is it that people are prisoners to their phones? That's why we call them cell phones. <laughs> we've got so many problems. We've got so many issues. And I think the, at the bottom of that really is, at the core of that is a lot of the family dysfunction that is happening to so many families today. Well, I've gotten you good and depressed, haven't I? Yeah. I love this uh, family circus thing. Uh, this is... Uh, you know, Family Circus, or I'm sorry, not Family Circus, Pickles. And uh, those are my two favorites, Family Circus and Pickles. And here, uh, you know, the old grandpa, he says, how are you doing today, Clyde? And Clyde says, oh, great. And he said, really? You mean your arthritis isn't bothering you and that persistent rash went away? No, I guess I just temporarily forgot about them. Thanks a lot for reminding me. You're welcome. It, it would be a shame to go through life and not remember how miserable you are. <laughs> that is how it is, isn't it? Uh, some, and some people, as I love to say, it feels so good to feel bad. Oh, they just love to wallow in that self-pity. But there are lots of problems. There are lots of things. There are lots of concerns that our world uh, is in the, and our nation and our communities are in the midst of. Which causes me, as a person of faith, to ask the question, what do you think Jesus would say about that? What do you think Jesus would say about all these things? Well, I don't think we have to really guess. I think we know. We know what he said. He said it in that 11th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Come to me. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. It caused me to remember back almost 10 years ago to the day. It was, uh, Jim, you remember the annual conference when we got flooded in, and it was 2008. The, the deluge floods were everywhere, 
in Indiana, and it was a, our annual conference then met down at IU on the IU campus in Bloomington. The, the uh, program ended, the annual conference ended, and it was time to go home. I was preaching the next Sunday, ready to go, and I couldn't get home. I drove north from Bloomington, got as far as the south edge of Noblesville, I, I'm sorry, of Martinsville, south edge of Martinsville, and couldn't go any further because the river had crossed the roads. So I called one of my friends, and he left a little ahead of me. I said, what'd you do? He said, well, I had to turn around, go back to Bloomington, went across 46, which takes you through Nashville and Columbus, and thought, well, maybe then I can head north on 65. But 65 in right there where the river comes, right at the Columbus exit on 65 and at Highway 46, it too was flooded. So I had to go all the way over to Greensburg and then finally come up uh, Interstate 74 and it took me about three and a half hours to get home that day to get ready for the next morning. And then as we knew, the, the floods uh, were very heavy in southern and central Indiana. And so our church took a group, uh, we, we were, Deb and I were then serving St. Mark, St. Carmel, and our church took a group that next week, about June the 11th or 12th, and we went down to Franklin to, as they say, muck out a house, you know, where, you, where the mud has just come in, where the water has brought in all this mud and deluge. Well, we did that, and we happened to be lucky enough to get also the house of a lady who was a hoarder. And uh, so here's what, it, this isn't it, but that's what it looked like, except it had a couple of feet of water that had gone down in the mud everywhere, and it was just a mess. We took a break about mid-morning, and just the way it worked out, the, the, the lady who lived in the house was named Rosalie, and Rosalie and I ended up sitting out on the front porch, and you know you're really, you, this is a great sign, you know that if you're really stressed and you're really anxious, you may put your hands, put your head in your hands, you know that? That's a sign that you're really stressed. And so she did that, and I said, well, what are you thinking? And she said, I just don't see any hope. I just don't see any way out of this. And I prayed with her. That was about all I could say. Yeah, you've got one heck of a mess here. Yeah. Well, then, I, not long ago, I read a book entitled uh, Letting Go of Worry. Or actually, that's the theme of it. But the title of the book was The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty. And she asked these questions in there. She said, what if we know, knew for certain that everything we're worried about today will work out fine? What if we had a guarantee that the problem bothering us would be worked out in the most perfect way and at the best possible time? Furthermore, what if we knew that, the, that three years from now we'd be grateful for that problem and its solution? She keeps asking these what if questions. What if we knew that even our worst fear, whatever that is for you, our worst fear would work out for the best? What if we knew the future was going to be good and we would have an abundance of resources and guidance to handle whatever comes our way? What if, she says, we knew everything was okay and we didn't have to worry about a thing? What would we do then? What would we do then? And then she says, Today I will know that I don't have to, I don't have to worry about anything. If I do worry, I will do it with the understanding that I'm choosing to worry. And it's not necessary. I'm choosing to worry, but it's not necessary. I, I wish it were, that's kind of from, I think, a, a human perspective. But I don't know about you, but that's not enough for me. That's a great thing. Those are all great things. That's kind of self-fulfillment, self-talk. But it wasn't enough to me. It, it still left me kind of feeling sort of empty and hollow. What, what, what hope can I really have? I, I can't just talk myself out of my anxiety. As, as much as Debbie and I were anxious about, was it our son who was the teacher who was shot? Didn't, you know, I could talk myself a thousand ways, 
but it wouldn't change the situation necessarily. Often we cannot simply change the situation by our feelings and hopes. But Jesus says something radically different. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me. Often our worries and burdens, I think, choose us. We don't necessarily choose our burdens. They come our way. The doctor gives us a diagnosis of cancer. We didn't know it was coming. Right out of the blue, it surprises us and shocks us. And then we have all that to worry about. Or maybe something else happens to us. Maybe a child, our child or children or grandchildren are having difficulties and no matter how we can love and encourage them, we, we still have issues. Or what about work? When it, work heaps burdens upon us and no matter how we try, the load just keeps pushing us down lower and lower. The burdens are there. Or what about if you're battling money worries as I listened to a friend talk this week, and he said, you know, I just, I don't know how I'm going to make it through. I, I've just got all these financial challenges. What? We can't solve all those problems. But Jesus makes it clear. He says, come to me. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Come to me, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That whole thing about the yoke is a, kind of an understanding about the, about the law, that the yoke of the law can be powerfully helpful or it can be powerfully restraining. Jesus talked about come to me and, and he used that image of the yoke. And if you've ever been to the state fair and saw the oxen display back there by all the old farm machinery, they always have them in a little barn there. And two giant oxen just like that who keep getting bigger and stronger. And they make a yoke for them. This is the kind that perhaps maybe Jesus was thinking about. In fact, uh, William Barclay, the scholar, said maybe this is exactly the kind of yoke that Jesus the carpenter made before he became the famous Messiah. He was working in his father Joseph's carpenter shop. Maybe he made yokes like that out of wood and it said that what, what the carpenter would do is he would sort of generally shape it and then he would go back to take it and apply it to the oxen to make sure it fit that particular animal exactly right so that then as the animal pulled the load it didn't get galled or scraped by the yoke that was rubbing their neck too difficult he said my yoke is easy my burden is light one person said maybe Jesus was a carpenter and he had his own little carpenter shop and maybe on the sign above it he said my yokes fit well my yokes fit well the problem is, Jesus says, come to me. The problem is, we come to everybody but Jesus with our problems. We maybe pay a counselor to go talk to them. Or we talk to our spouse, or we talk to our close friends that are really intimate and close to us, and we share all that. But that's not enough. That's really not enough. We must give our burdens to Jesus. He's the only one that can solve them, not us. He's the one that can solve it. I love this little cartoon, this uh, comic strip from uh, Family Circus. And then on the left, you see little Billy there trying to go to sleep, and he can't go to sleep, you know, so what we've, what we've been told ever since we were little. Well, just count the sheep, you know, so he's counting the sheep there. <clears throat> and then his little sister says, Grandma always says, forget the sheep. Talk to the shepherd. Talk to the shepherd. That's what we need. To talk to the shepherd. To give the shepherd our burdens. To give him our worries. To admit that we are powerless over the violence that is endemic in our society. To admit that our Lord and as we work through others, we can make a difference. To admit that as we work and pray. 
Mr. Wesley was a great prayer, but he's also said we must do all the good we can. And so I hope some of you have been nudged since Friday to say, what can I do about this problem? What can I do? How can I help? How can I be the hands and feet of Jesus? And at the same time, though, to give it to Jesus. You see, I think the difference is if, if we just continue in our worries, our worries consume us, won't they? They'll just make us to the point that, that we are immobilized. We, we can't act, we can't think. Our fears overwhelm us. They overtake us to the point that we are just paralyzed. But as we give our concerns to Jesus, as we give him our burdens, then we find that we can then go out and tackle the problem. Lord, you've already taken my burdens, so I'm free from that. And I can go out and not be a part of the problem, but be a part of the solution. So I close this morning by inviting you to think about this. You've seen this. Good morning, this is God. I'll be handling all your problems today. I will not need your help. So have a good day. In your bulletins this morning, I gave you a, you should find a little card little four by six postcard kind of thing. The real challenge is, oh, we love to hold on to our burdens, don't we? Oh, just, just feel so good, mm, just to wallow in them. But Jesus says, come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, who are burdened down, and I will give you rest. So I'm gonna sing a little song. <clears throat> And I'm, as I'm singing, I don't care if you look at me or hear me. I don't care at all. I really don't. But what I want you to do is be praying to your Lord and say, okay, what have I been carrying that I need to give up? What do I need to give to Jesus? What have I been stewing on? That was my dad's favorite word, stewing. You know, like it's, you're stewing in your own juices. What are those things that you've been stewing on? What are those worries that you've been carrying? What are those things that, like, the, like uh, Miranda with the children did this morning, are weighing you down to the point that you just can't go? Have you ever carried a backpack or something, carried something heavy for a long time, and then when you finally put it down, it almost feels like you've been lifted up? You know, you, you take that burden off your shoulders, and then it, uh, it feels like you're... It really feels like you're, like you're soaring, like you're moving up. Well, that's what I hope you'll experience today. So while I sing this little gospel song, I hope you'll be praying and saying, Lord, here, here are the burdens I'm going to give you today. There's a pencil or pen right there in front of you. Remember the words of Jesus. Come to me, all you labor who labor and are heavy laden. <coughs> And I will give you rest. So says Jesus to us. So I invite you to be praying and listening and offloading all those worries now. Not writing, you're not writing, get to writing. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm. Lord, take my hand, lead me home. Where are you coming on this? Are you giving them to him? When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is all.
Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Are you giving them to him? Take them as Drew plays. Give your worries to the Lord. He loves you with all his heart. And he'll give you all that you need. He will help you through all your worries, all your burdens. He will light your load. Lord, take 